I'm originally from the Texas Panhandle, from Amarillo. Growing up in Texas was tough for Gael Uy. He remembers when he was a senior in college. It was getting to the point where I was so afraid of violence against me that I stopped eating or drinking while I was on campus so that I didn't have to use the restroom. You see, Uy is transgender, and to give context, this was all happening while Texas was considering a bill that would limit transgender people's access to bathrooms. Now he lives in Oregon and is attending medical school to become a doctor. For those of us who aren't transgender, here's how he explains it. Most people have a preference. Do you prefer sandals or shoes? Probably shoes. Okay, so like you didn't choose to prefer shoes, but wearing shoes makes you feel more comfortable, right? Same with yep. being trans. Like we didn't choose to be more comfortable in a gender identity. It's just being able to pursue that presentation gives us peace of mind. Oi is keenly aware of something called minority trauma. To me, minority trauma, again, in really simple terms, is the idea of recognizing that violence is a consequence of just existing. Even though he hasn't experienced direct violence, others like him have. But if you have to worry about violence being a consequence of you existing in a certain space, then that's trauma. That's traumatic. He knows trauma is a heavy word. And violence is also a very heavy word. Um, but skirting around the issue doesn't make it any less real for the people that face it. So violence can be physical, sure, but it can be emotional, it can be mental, um, it can be verbal. There are, there are all kinds of marginalized groups that are experiencing their own form of trauma. Dr. Monica Williams is a clinical psychologist specializing in ethnic minority mental health, racism, and racial trauma. I give a lot of trainings on um, culturally informed therapy, um, you know, diversity and inclusion, race and racism, how to be an anti-racist therapist, um, microaggressions. What are microaggressions? Well, microaggressions are sort of small, subtle acts of racism um, that are deniable. She says they can be something as subtle as walking into a university and seeing pictures of presidents on the wall. And they're all white men, right? So that could be a racial and gender microaggression because it sort of implies that Smart people and leaders are only white men. Dr. Williams says over time, people can absorb those small messages, reinforcing inequitable social structures and negative beliefs. It builds and causes racial trauma. It's insidious. It's not blatant, um, which is why it's really easy to convince yourself that you're not experiencing it. And, um, and start to think that you're less than. Being Asian American, uh, and being blamed for COVID, uh, and being assaulted for it, or being black in America, and everything that comes with that. Those are all traumatic experiences that if you don't fit in those demographics, you never have to think about. Those of us who might not have to think about it, well, that's privilege. Everybody is responsible for helping to make this better, and particularly people with power and privilege, because they have, they have more advantages by, by virtue of the the skin they were born into. So we all need to do constant work um, to be the people we want to be. Meantime, Oy is on the path to the person he wants to be in his third year of medical school. Um, I've never seen the women's restroom at my school. I've heard that they have scented like hand lotion, but like, I don't actually know. <laughs> but I don't know. And I think it's awesome that I don't know. I Part of what motivated him to become a doctor was mental health and the health disparities between the queer population and those who aren't queer. I didn't realize there was such a big difference between being tolerated and being supported um, until I came up here. But there's still work to do. He's hoping his story will help. Awareness, right? Because you can't actually begin to fix something if you're not aware that it exists. Here's the thing, even if you're a good person and even if you're against racism, Dr. Williams says you can sometimes still unintentionally do racist acts. So Dr. Williams says we can all start being better by digging deep, examining our own beliefs and helping our neighbors, our friends who may not be as privileged. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News.